what exactly is machine learning? So how, how do machines learn? How, how can I imagine this? To put it super simple, machine learning is a, is a collection of algorithms which learn from historical data, okay? And they try to predict future outcomes. It's as simple and as complex as that. Hello and welcome. Um, this is Harold this time on, on uh, this side of the table and not Yasmin, um, because we have a very special guest today. Welcome, Katharina. Thanks for having me. Uh, we just discussed that this is actually your first appearance in a podcast, and so it's your first experience as a podcast guest. And as I can say so far, you're doing an awesome job. Woohoo! Yeah. <laughs> Great to hear. So, Katharina is our chief data scientist. And uh, today we want to talk about how we use data science in insurance telematics. And uh, we have Katharina to tell us how we do that. Katharina, so we, we, the both of us, we're having our weekly calls. And you always excite me with um, your knowledge in data science. And we also teach together in university uh, data science, which is strange because I'm not a data scientist, but I do the technical, uh, the, not the technical, but the business <laughs> part, and you do the technical part. So I think the most important thing to learn these days is what's the difference between, let's say, data science, machine learning models, et cetera, and AI? Well, that's a good one. So um, let's briefly start with like giving a short um, overview of data science. So data, data science basically is how we turn data into understanding and making smarter decisions by the end of the day. So I always think of it as a toolbox where you have specialized instruments which help you um, through all of the data process. Yeah, it, it supports you in gathering relevant data for your needs. It supports you in making meaning, meaningful analysis. And then you do visualizations, reporting, and interpretation. So you can take smart data-driven decisions. AI basically is also a set of tools, a set of algorithms, but they have a very different lookout. They are not so much trying to support us in our decision-making, but they are trying to support machines in doing the decision-makings for us. While, and there the goal obviously is that the machine at some point can mimic human-like decision-making. That's awesome. In a previous episode, um, we talked about um, artificial intelligence and how we use it in, uh, in insurance telematics. And today, I, I would like to discuss how we use data science, how we use machine learning and other methodologies of data science in insurance telematics. Let me answer this by giving you specific examples of our services, because basically our whole SDK environment is built upon data science by the end of the day, so it's found... SDK is our software development kit, so this is the, fund, the telematics foundation you're talking about. Yes, exactly. And, and we employ data science and AI tools like throughout the whole process. Yeah, It starts like on the device itself, how we process the data, how we collect it, and then ends up how we interpret the data that we have. So um, one very important interpretation layer that we do is trip classification, where we um, try to understand which mode of transport you're actually using in your daily life. So um, because when we first understand that you're moving, it's, it's basically unclear how. Okay, so we have uh, certain layers doing this. Um, so when you say how I'm moving, you're referring to whether I'm using a car, I'm using exactly. a public transport, a train, a tram, a bus, or whatever. Exactly. Or whether you're simply walking or riding a bike. Exactly. So there is different layers of complexity um, to answer this question. And we do this um, mostly through smartphone-based sensors. So we use GPS, we use the speed, of course, but we also use um, accelerometer data, gyroscope data to answer especially the question whether you're in a car or in a public transport. So the most, the most complex question here is to understand whether you're in a car or in a bus trip. This is the most, the most similar in terms of the data that we're having. Um, yes, let me give you an example um, just that you understand how we do it. Um, we work extensively also here with domain knowledge because it's super important not just look at the data from a statistical point of view, but we have information like you could compare bus trip to car trips through a, a stop frequency, for example. Bus trips normally stop at a certain interval for a certain period of time, while a car would not do these patterns. So these are things we look for. 
So what you're basically saying, and maybe we should go and dive a little bit deeper here, is we combining different data science methodologies. One is like machine learning, where we learn, where we teach the machine, or actually the machine learns by using different yes. patterns. And on the other hand, where we implement heuristics. So let's say more, let's say rule based things, like for example, you said a uh, bus stops in certain intervals or trams don't have 90 degree turns, for example. Exactly. This is a very good point, yes, because it's always also about complexity and efficiency of our systems. So we do not throw all the data we have into our algorithms, of course, but we look for relevant signals first. And if there is a signal which is very strong, we can directly build a heuristic based on it. We can go in rule-based and only for the more nuanced patterns, we use machine learning then. So now we talked uh, about detecting mode of transport, which, which is essential, because if we try to, let's say, measure and score driving behavior, which is one element of insurance telematics, we obviously need to understand whether you have a reckless bus driver uh, or you're driving your car. Um, this is very important. What else are we doing with, uh, where, we, where else do we implement uh, machine learning, data science, etc.? in our processes. Well, you just mentioned uh, risky driving. So driver behavior scoring is, of course, one of the main aspects of our, um, of our applications. And one part of it, one very important part, is the inter interaction with your smartphone while driving. So That's distracted driving. Distracted driving, exactly. So parts of it, like doing a phone call, is, is easy to evaluate because the smartphone operating system tells us this information directly, whether you're in a call or not. But there is more to driver distraction than just doing phone calls. It's also about texting and also about like reading something, scrolling through the web and things. And this information, especially on um, Apple smartphones, on iOS, is restricted. So we were, the, we were having the need to build a machine learning classifier that, anal that understands how the device is being used or whether at all during a trip. We have solved this question by um, evaluating the smartphone sensors, like the accelerometer and very important also the gyroscope. Um, and this information tells us whether a smartphone is not used at all, whether it's being moved around. This can just be random sliding motions while driving. So there is not a real interaction included. And then you have cognitive and manual interaction with your smartphone. So what you're saying is like we are taking, let's say, hundreds and thousands of data points per oh, yeah. minute. And uh, so we're going, I think, sensors in the smartphone, we sample somewhere between 20 and 100 hertz, which is exactly. like 20 to 100, let's say, data points per second on different axes. So we're taking really, really a lot of data in order to make and train a model in order to make the decision whether the phone is idle, so it's just laying in the car, whether it's in motion, so we pick it up and you're moving it, you have this micro movement. Exactly, that's what we're doing. And you also mentioned a very important part, um, the question about data efficiency. Because yes, we have this high sampling rate on the smartphone, obviously, but we already there implement the processing steps so we do not transfer all the raw data. Yeah? So a very, very important part of the intelligence already happens on the device itself. As I remember when I look at our data that um, when I see, let's say, phone usage, we get like one data point per minute, uh, one data point per second, sorry. Exactly, so this is the This is what arrives already. in our backend. Exactly. But in, let's say on the front and on the device itself, the sample frequency can be much higher, but we yes. do, a, let's say, already some kind of application of data science on the phone itself and only transfer, let's say, the result. Exactly, the meaningful signals we need to then um, to, tr to use in our algorithm, exactly. Awesome. I have my, on my list, and we will have another episode specifically on this one, but we also have uh, crash detection. We, we call it AID-8, Automatic Impact Detection. So just, just brief, because I don't want to spoil a future episode we are going to do. Well, um, AID is a very important service because um, if you're having an accident, you want that the emergency chain is started as soon as the accident happened, especially if you... Uh, need to endure bodily injury. Yeah? So what we're doing basically is we, we listen 
um, for low-level signals in the accelerometer on the smartphone that itself. Sorry, what does an accelerometer do for the audience who doesn't um, know the technical terms? Yeah, of course. So it basically um, helps us understand directional movement of the smartphone. So in this very basic layer, we just um, listen, so we understand you're moving, and we listen for peaks because an accident would induce some kind of peak acceleration. Yeah, you hit an obstacle and then there is a signal and then there is nothing. Basically, this is the, the, the template of, of an accident you would see in the accelerometer data. Yeah. If you, so, for example, on my smartphone, the accelerometer and the gyroscope, they're used in a normal smartphone usage. For example, if you, if you, if you turn your phone, right? If you, when you go from portrait mode to exactly, landscape code, that it helps me, the gyroscope or accelerometer with cheaper Android phones, for example. Um, I'm not saying that all Android phones are cheap, but with some cheaper models of Android. Um, so, and we use this kind of sensor data in order to learn about, let's say, impacts. Exactly, that's the data we use, yes. We actually have labeled accident data, so we have samples from car accidents, and we have samples from non-car uh, non accident situations, which enabled us to actually train such models to detect impacts. I would love to go on with this, but we will talk this at, uh, at, at a later episode. So talk to me, um, and, and, and please make it, let's say, in a language that non data scientists can understand. So what exactly is machine learning? So how, how do machines learn? How, how can I imagine this? Well, to put it super simple, machine learning is a, is a collection of algorithms which learn from historical data, okay? And they try to predict future outcomes. It's as simple and as complex as that. So um, you have different kinds of algorithms in machine learning. You have, like I just mentioned in the crash scenario, you can have labeled data and then you're in the setting of supervised learning. Supervised learning means you give the historical data to the algorithm and you also tell him, okay, this sample comes from class A and the other sample comes from class B. So, the so in the, let, to circle back, for example, when we talk about smartphone usage, so when mm -hmm. I pick up the phone, we tell the phone, this motion now was, I picked up the phone. And yes. we, this is labeling. So a human, in this case, a human says, this motion was picking up the phone. And this micro movements was using the phone. And we tell this over and over and over and over again with hundreds and thousands of samples. And based on these information, so the underlying sensor data plus the label on top, the model learns. Exactly. Exactly this is what I, happens. I'm, I'm almost a data scientist. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, 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 and the way you described it is also like labeled data also has a certain time and cost aspect. So there is a second um, part of machine learning where you do not have this data because it's like just too costly to get it or it's impossible to get it for um, also. So this is unsupervised machine learning um, where you cannot do like the, what I just mentioned. Yeah, you, it's not an direct yeah, not a human comparison. In the loop. Yeah, there is no human in the loop, exactly. Um, but you could do like um, clustering techniques, for example. You could cluster your drivers, your customers, based on certain characteristics you see in your data, and you look for patterns this way. Okay, you do not know whether the high risk profile that you created, um, you do not know the accident uh, frequency there, so the exact value. But there is still signal in the data which tells you, okay, people behaving like this, they belong to the same segment. And we assume from context, from our experience, um, from our domain knowledge that this is the group with a higher risk. I understand. So basically we have three different methodologies. Uh, in machine learning, we have two. We have like assisted learning where we have a human in the loop who is like actively labeling. Uh, data. Then we have the unassisted or non-supervised learning, why we use cluster methodologies and others in order to let the machine learn based on, let's say, demographics, however they may be clustered. And we have rules where we give like hard-coded rules where we say, whatever happens, this is the rule. For example, um, and I'm spoiling now, mm -hmm. if a car continues driving after a minute, we can anticipate that no crash happened. Exactly. Okay, awesome. So, what are, in your opinion, because we're, we're already doing a lot and I don't want to repeat episode three where we talked about um, artificial intelligence, but 
what are you seeing? Where are you using? Where will we be using um, machine learning, data science in the future in telematics and similar, let's say, environments? But it, it will be um, for sure going into the direction of predictive modeling. Okay, this is super important to anticipate risk. Yeah, we have like a project where we where we we try to um, understand at when you will be where in order to send you targeted weather alerts, for example. So this is super important because it's yes, for example, accident impact automatic impact detection is about um, triggering emergency alerts, but it's much better to prevent the risk in the first place. Yeah, absolutely. So what what you're saying is that. We're using past behavior in order to anticipate future behavior. And we are yes. not only doing this on the, let's say, on motion patterns of technology, like sensor data, but we're also doing this based on, let's say, past locations of yourself. Because, and I can add on, on this because we did the project together, people have a very stable life. So in general speaking, yes. they have their fixed location. So they have their home, most of them. Um, they have a place uh, where they work or where they spend the day. They have like where they do their groceries. They have, let's say, their best friend. Um, they have their, their favorite restaurant and they probably have some, let's say, leisure like, like fitness club or so. And they, they're relatively stable in their, in their, in their locomotion. Yes, I 100% agree. Yeah, awesome. What else? How can you, how how will be using, um, let's say, data science? And I'm I'm probably taking this uh, on this uh, myself. So um, we're using generative AI um, in in let's say creating content, which, which is very important because when you when you talk, for example, on weather warnings that we apply when we believe that in the future location will be a weather event, we use generative AI to compile the message to tell you this. Because you give us the information from the data science perspective, you feed in the information, when is the person going to be where? And we need to understand what is the weather going to be by interpreting different, let's say, weather stations, etc. We are not a meteorological company, but we use our own models on top of meteorologic data. And we'll generate a message in your language, so in your, in, in your mother tongue, and in a tone of voice uh, the insurance company, for example, um, uh, takes. So this is a, is a good example in my point of view of how we combine, let's say, different elements of data science. So machine learning, interpretation, predictive analytics in combination with generative AI. So, let us conclude and, and, and put the key takeaways from this episode. So, you said that data science helps us transform data, raw data, into meaningful, um, let's say, information. Exactly. And supports us making better decisions, hopefully. Awesome. What else? We were talking about differentiation between data science which is more the analytics part, and we talked about AI, which is more the decision-making part, which I guess, or you, you, you framed it differently. You framed I framed it, it differently. I said data science supports us as humans to do the job, and AI supports machines to do the job for us. So if I challenge this, actually a machine, so actually AI helps me to do my job better, for example. <laughs> but what you're saying, it's basically the underlying algorithms support the large language model to perform better. Exactly. Okay, From and that I'm, the, I'm taking advantage of this as the user, but in reality, it's the underlying, what under the hood, what we not yes. see when we go into the communication in the chat window of ChatGPT and uh, of Claude or somebody else. So what's happening under the hood, that's what you're referencing. And what else? We're... We're, we're looking for exciting growth and future possibilities in telematics because, as you said, it's so much more important for us um, to predict risk and help not people and help people not having a fr an accident in the first place um, than just being there. And, and this is important as well. But being there when something happened implies that some, something happened already. So we're trying to make it. Uh, make it possible that we help people to avoid accidents in the first place. Katarina, it was a pleasure having you. Thank you so much. I learned a lot, even though I have the pleasure to spending so much time with you during our course of work. And uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. 
um, you can see summaries uh, in, uh, in, in, in the text below. And we appreciate if you subscribe to our channel. We really put a lot of effort in order bringing, let's say, knowledge about insurance telematics to you. And see you soon.